Why should I be discouraged? Why do the shadows fall? Why must my heart feel lonely and long? For heavenly home, for Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is He. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know He watches me. I know He watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. He is eyes on the sparrow. And I know he watches me, watches me, watches me. Greetings, friends. We are blessed to have you join us for worship. 
Thank you for all you're doing to bear witness as the church to Jesus Christ in these days. Thanks to all who are working behind the scenes to make these services possible. As you're aware, our bishop has called for the suspension of our gatherings at least through May 31st so that we may do no harm to those who may be most vulnerable in our midst. Let me invite you to continue to send your tithes and offerings to Miss Marilyn Parks at Nebo United Methodist Church, 216 Park Street in Newburn, and for Center United Methodist Church to Pat Carpenter at 506 Nora Drive in Newburn. So much upon our hearts and minds uh, as we struggle to enter into life in these days. Prayer has been one of the foundational points for us, just as reading the Word sustains and strengthens us each day. Let us bring our prayer concerns together now as we go to the Lord in prayer. May we pray. Loving, gracious, and wondrous God, majesty and might are your clothing, grace and mercy are your very nature. We marvel at the mystery of all your ways. We glory in the incredible news of resurrection. Nothing in all creation is equal to your power or your glory, O oh God. We come in worship today confessing our failure and our sin. You and you alone know all the, our ways and nothing is hidden from you. We stand before you judged, and all we can do is plead for your mercy. By your Son and in your love, we find ourselves forgiven, renewed, restored, and loved as children of our Heavenly Father. So we come offering our prayers for the sake of the world, a world traumatized by the events of these days, by the tragedies of this and every season, overwhelmed with the needs all around us and struggling to find our way in this season of life. We pray for those this day who find their lives adrift upon uncharted waters without an anchor that holds. Speak, O Lord, to the storm in which we find ourselves, like you once spoke to the winds and the waves. Peace, be still, that it may be so, even in our hearts. So we come to pray for the church, your church, left on earth to carry forth the glorious message of hope in the hopeless places of this world left on earth to be the light shining in the darkness, the plumb line of righteousness in a world bent and twisted and broken. We struggle in these days to be effective witnesses for you and your word, O Lord. Empower us by your Spirit to again bring hope and peace, joy and strength to those about us. Renew our spirits and empower our faith that we may indeed arise to the calling of Christ and establish the kingdom that shall have no end. For all these things we must pray, even as we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In 1945, a musical opened on Broadway in New York that ran for 890 performances in a row. It was Roger and Hammerstein's Carousel. Within that musical, 
was perhaps the most remembered and beloved song through all the years. It was entitled, You'll Never Walk Alone. Do you remember the words? The words say, When you walk through the storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm, there's a golden sky and a sweet silver song of a lark. Walk on through the wind. Walk on through the rain. Though your dreams be tossed and blown, walk on, walk on with hope in your heart. You will never walk alone. You will never walk alone. Walk on, walk on with hope in your heart. You will never walk alone. You will never walk alone. Today's scripture speaks to us of this fact. We find Jesus teaching in the temple. He is on center stage. It is winter in Jerusalem, and Jesus is at the headquarter of Judaism. He is in the temple, and it is, he is there for the, for the Feast of Dedication. Jesus expected the house of prayer to be for all people, open to all, but he, he finds the great walls of division. The Gentiles are relegated to the outer court where the selling and the bartering of, of animals and the exchange of money is going on in the temple. The women are not permitted to go into the worship area of the male worshipers. And the, the lay men are not allowed into the court where the priests are. And the priests are not allowed into the Holy of Holies, that place where God was dwelling among them and where only the high priest could enter once a year. What he found were high walls of exclusion. In such a setting, the work of God could not be seen. And Jesus is there teaching on the chilly side porch called Solomon's Porch. And John writes in his gospel, it's winter. Indeed, it is a spiritual winter as well. The people of Israel were desperately looking for a spiritual springtime. They were looking for the coming of the Messiah. A Messiah who would restore the hopes and fortunes of the nature, who would lift the dreams of the people, who would bring assurance that they no longer walked alone. Let's hear the word from John's Gospel. Today our Gospel reading is from John chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. And I'm reading from the New King James Version today. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will not by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This Sunday is called Good Shepherd Sunday. It reminds us of the words of Jesus. 
we know that, that the people had become like sheep. And we also know that after centuries of domestication, the sheep on the hillsides needed a keeper. They had lost their instincts to defend themselves, to defend themselves from the wolf or the coyote or the dog. Today, shepherds in various parts of the world will introduce llama or alpacas as a part of the flock because those animals will fight tenaciously and defend the sheep. Sometimes cattlemen in our own country will place donkeys among their cows to help protect the newborn calves from the wolves or the coyotes or the dogs. It is the shepherd's job to take care of the predators, the wolves and the thieves and the bandits. It's the sheep's job to stay close to the shepherd and to hear his voice. Sadly, for today's sheep, such as ourselves, there's a problem with our attitudes. You know, we don't like to think of ourselves as sheep. We are cowboys, you know. It's not our nature to stand back and let someone else defend us. The truth is, we are no more capable of defending ourselves from the attacks of evil than the Israelites were in their day. Jesus said, whoever tries to enter the fold except of the door is a thief and a robber. George Adam Smith, 19th century biblical scholar, once made a visit to the Holy Land. And in that visit in Bethlehem, he came upon a place where there was a sheepfold. And he talked to the shepherd about his flock. And George Adam Smith walked around and looked at the sheepfold, that enclosure in which the sheep were placed at night where they would be safe. But he couldn't find a door. He looked everywhere for a wooden door that, that would fit to enclose the sheepfold. And he turned to the shepherd and said, Where's the door? The shepherd replied, as you probably know, I am the door. At night when I have all my sheep in the fold, I lay down across the door. Nothing goes out and nothing gets in without me knowing it. Life for sheep in Jesus' day was tough. Life hasn't changed much, friends. All around us are people who are struggling like sheep, who have life basic issues. Many are traumatized. But to be in Christ means to know that we are one of His own, to know that we're included in those He is caring about, looking over, to know that we have the protection within the fold. Jesus wanted no confusion from his followers as he taught there on Solomon's porch. He was saying, you can't enter the fold by your personal deeds. You can't enter the fold simply by having a certain philosophy about life or merely following the rituals and details minutely of the law. The only way is through Him. He is the doorkeeper. The Scripture says the sheep hear His voice and He calls His own sheep by name and leads them out. The sheep hear Him, which means they not only listen, but they heed. They hear and they obey. There's little value, friends, in just hearing what Jesus says if we do not obey. Listen to what Jesus said about the shepherd. And when he brings out his sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, 
and they know his voice. There he was daily in the temple among the Jewish leaders teaching, and they did not recognize him. They did not heed his voice. They refused to follow him. They were more concerned about keeping the unclean people away from God than finding his own son who was right there in their midst. Jesus said sheep who really know the shepherd heed his voice and follow him and do not stray. When I was a young seminary student in Memphis, Cokesbury opened its first store there on Perkins Avenue. And they had a grand opening celebration and myself and a couple of the other students decided to go out for the dedication. Our bishop, Bishop Ellis Finger, was there to present the keys to open the store and to bless it. After the ceremony there in the front of the store at the parking lot, the store was opened and we browsed the aisles. And as I walked down one of the aisles, I suddenly came face to face with Bishop Ellis Finger. I was a lowly seminary student in my first year, green around the ears. And as I encountered him, in the aisle, he looked me in the face and he said, Hello, Philip. He called me by name. I was overwhelmed that he knew who I was. Jesus knows your name, friends, and he goes before you. You know, the, a good shepherd never drives his sheep, but a good shepherd leads them. He blazes the trail. He takes the blunt of the danger. He sets the pace and the direction so that we never walk alone as we go through the traumas and joys of life. Let me close with this. Dr. Leslie Weatherhead writes of attending Handel's Messiah presentation at Royal Albert Hall in London with his father-in-law, who was a man well into his 70s, a great saint of God. As they stood for the Hallelujah Chorus, the music lifted their voice. King of kings, Lord of lords, He shall reign forever and ever, forever and ever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Leslie said his father-in-law with tears streaming down his face looked at him and said, Leslie, that's my Savior they're singing about. Leslie said, I shall never forget the meaning he put on that word my. My Savior that they're singing about. Friends, Nowhere are we promised in this world a journey free of the wilderness experiences. Nowhere are we promised that all the dangers will be abolished. All the rocks and thorns and slippery places will be taken from us so that we do not struggle at some point. But we are promised that the Good Shepherd will be there in all those situations. Let me ask you today, is He your shepherd? He can be. He stands ready to meet us where we are and to care for us as we are, as only He can. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious, merciful, loving God, we look unto You with wonder, and appreciation for you sent your son among us to be for us a shepherd a guide a blessing we just pray O oh gracious god that your strength and mercy and peace will so strengthen us that we may always hear his
voice and follow him through all of our days. In Jesus' name, amen.